In this video you're gonna see how I spend an absurd amount of hours trying to make something cool. Only to realize that getting ends from point A to point B is way harder than it sounds. Join me on this roller coaster of trial and error, frustration and tiny victories as I tinker with simple rules that somehow create incredibly complex behavior. Emergence is beautiful, but getting there? Not so much. Before we get into that, I wanted to let you know that I plan to create a video where I code your ideas, so if you want to participate, let me know what you would want to see in the comments section below. Today's video was meant to be a continuation of my end simulation video, but if you haven't watched it, don't worry, you don't really need to. Since the upload of the previous video, I've been on and off the project, trying my best to optimize it according to suggestions you left me in the comments. By the way, I was really surprised how well that video went and I just wanted to thank you so much for every single like and comment you left. It's really great to know that you like what I do. Okay, let's get back to the video. I tried Tai Chi, I tried Namba, I tried other libraries I could find, but I wasn't able to make the simulation fast enough to handle thousands of ends. I initially thought that the problem was with the Pygame library. I thought that it wasn't able to handle that many objects being drawn to the screen every frame, so I tried to get the drawing done on a separate thread, but it didn't help either. After playing around with time function, I found out that drawing wasn't a bottleneck. Now it seems obvious, but after tinkering with the code for so long, in the middle of the night, I could've believed that a ghost was slowing down my simulation. After so many fights lost, I declared defeat. I'm sure it's doable in Python, I just couldn't get it done. Maybe I'll pick it up in the future, but for now, I decided to switch to a more proper language for that kind of task, c -sharp. Let's get to coding. We're gonna start with the end class. Before I implement any behavior, I want to make sure that ends are being displayed properly. So for now the move method is making the ends move in a random way without any logic. The code for displaying ends looks like this. It creates an ellipse to be shown for every end. The only thing that might look confusing here is this line. How can you add a function? Well, it's just a syntax for event handling. It means that the update simulation function will run every time a set interval elapses. Let's see how it works. Well, it's alright, but what will happen if you try to increase the number of ants? That's what I thought. Note that there is no logic implemented yet. This certainly needs fixing. I think that drawing every single end directly on canvas is not the best idea. Instead of doing that, we're gonna create a bitmap and interact with each pixel in order to draw the ends. Then, we're going to display the entire bitmap. That should be a lot faster. That looks way better. Let's work on some logic then. I'm gonna start with creating some structure. First of all, entity class that is going to be extended by ant, food and pheromone classes. Each of these classes will have its own manager. Why are they not moving? Have I forgotten something? Oh, I see. Okay, ants are moving, so now let's code their behavior. The order goes like this. First, ants try to sense nearby food. If ant doesn't sense any food, it tries to look for pheromones left by other ants. There are two types of pheromones. Blue ones lead home and red ones lead to food source. If there are no pheromones, ant goes wandering, which basically means moving randomly, hoping to find other food source or pheromone particle. Code for finding food is pretty simple. If there is food detected within a certain set radius, ant goes straight to its location and tries to pick it up. My initial take for following pheromones was the same. Find the closest pheromone and gets to its location. It didn't get the job done though. Neither did following the furthest pheromone within the detection radius. Well, it kinda worked, but for a really low number of ants, and that's not what I was looking for. If you increase the number of ants, they were getting stuck a lot. Turns out pheromone following was the most time-consuming thing in the entire project. I was trying to get it to work by tweaking parameters and narrowing the field of vision for the end, but eventually I decided to scrape the initial idea and try out something new. While watching Sebastian Lake's video on the same topic, I noticed that his take on the problem was way more simple and decided to try it out. It works like this. 
You take a sample of some space in front of the end and calculate the average pheromone intensity of the sample area. Based on that intensity, you make a decision whether the end should turn left, right or keep going in the same direction. I tried to implement it, but I realized that it would be extremely inefficient because of the way pheromones work in my simulation. Remember that each pheromone is a separate particle, so I would have to come up with a way to map each particle to a place on the plane without having to iterate over the entire collection. Maybe use some spatial data structure like QuadTree to store them all and hope that it would be fast enough to make the simulation run on a reasonable frame rate. Instead of doing that, I decided to remake the way pheromones work. In another video I watched, made by Petsa's work, I saw the grid structure of pheromones left by ants and it seemed perfectly fit for the new way of navigation. So I decided to try it out. It is going to occupy some unnecessary space in memory because some of the grid cells are going to be empty, but access to cells will be instant and that's what matters. Let's run it. Okay, leaving pheromones seems to work, but what about following them? Oh, come on. Now it's avoiding them, but we're getting there. Finally, it seems to be working, but does it work for the entire colony? As you can see, ants tend to get stuck in places and sometimes they create clumps on the plane. The navigation clearly needs improvements, so I'm gonna try to tweak the parameters to make it look better. I didn't manage to progress by changing parameters, so I tried out something different. Now ants can stray off the path sometimes and go on wandering for a little bit. That allows them to get unstuck and reach their goal. It took a while to find the sweet spot for that parameter. If the value is too low, ants completely ignore pheromones. If it's too high, ants can't stray off the path at all, so you need to choose it carefully. I let the simulation run and everything seemed alright, up to a certain point. After a while, I noticed an unexpected behavior. Ants seem to omit the anthill. I thought it was weird, but if you think about it, it actually makes perfect sense. As you know, ants move based on pheromone intensity in the area in front of them. When they reach the anthill, they drop off their foot at the edge, so there is no reason for them to go through the middle of the anthill. Most of the time they turn back or go sideways. That behavior forms a circle of pheromone around the anthill that is preventing them from dropping their foot. To solve that problem, I set the pheromone intensity of the anthill area to max value, which makes the ants go into that area no matter what. That would be the end of this video, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe to help me grow my channel. If you want to play with the simulation I created, there is a GitHub link in the description. If you find better parameter configuration than I did, please share it in the comments section below. I would love to try it out myself.